Hi, Mrs. Brown here. Um, this is an AP Psychology video to review disorders and treatments, um, which is the Myers book units 12 and 13. So I'm just going to go through some of the stuff that we've already covered um, as a nice little succinct review for your um, exam, whether it be your unit exam or your final or your AP exam. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is the DSM-5. This is the fifth edition of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. Um, this is published by the APA, American Psych Psychiatric Association. Um, and it's reliable because it looks at observable patterns of behavior. Um, and it gives you the different credentials for each of the different disorders. Um, and they say behavior is disordered when it is our three Ds, defiant, distressful, and dysfunctional. Okay, so disordered behavior is defiant, distressful, and dysfunctional. One thing that um, psychology and the DSM uses now is the medical model. So the medical model basically says that psychological disorders are a sickness that need to be diagnosed treated and cured. So there is the, the three steps, the diagnosis, the treatment, and potentially the cure that comes with this. And there are all kinds of different um, therapies. There are over 250 different types of therapies and treatments out there um, that work with this medical model. Um, I want to go into some of the different categories of disorders within the DSM-5. Um, the first category that we're going to talk about are mood disorders. Um, so the two major mood disorder categories that you need to know um, are depression and bipolar disorder. Um, so for depression, um, depression is actually so pervasive that sometimes it's nicknamed the common cold of psychiatric disorders. Um, so it is more common than some of the other psychiatric disorders. And we know that depression is caused, the biological cause is low levels of the neurotransmitter serotonin. Um, so the result of this is sad, sadness, um, depressed mood, maybe being disinterested in activities that someone was previously interested in. They can become sleepy, apathetic. They can have appetite changes where they eat more or less than they used to eat. Um, and so this is something that's really going to deeply impact their daily lives and their functioning. As far as the treatments go for depression, um, there are lots of different treatments out there. There are There's biological therapy, including medication, things like SSRI, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors like Prozac. Um, there's also ECT, electroconvulsive therapy, shock therapy. There's RTMS, which is repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulation. Um, and there's also light exposure therapy. Um, and then, of course, there are all kinds of psychotherapy treatments, ranging from psychoanalytic treatments, humanistic treatments, sociocultural treatments, um, cognitive treatments, behavioral treatments. There's all kinds of other treatments out there for depression as well. Um, bipolar disorder is the second mood disorder um, category that you need to know. And we talked about um, bipolar 1 versus bipolar 2 in class, but basically bipolar in general it used to be called manic depressive disorder because it's a very high manic state followed by a very low depressive state. Um, so usually they're very apathetic, then they're very cheerful and talkative or increased energy, restlessness, um, whatever, and that is really um, characterized by those emotional extremes. So these are mood swings, those emotional extremes um, from very high highs to very low lows. Um, the treatments, obviously psychotherapy treatments, um, and then also biological treatments. Um, usually depression is treated using mood stabilizing drugs, mood stabilizers like lithium. Um, schizophrenia is the next category in the DSM-5 I want to talk about. Um, 
And there are two things, two symptoms that dif- kind of are indicative of schizophrenia. The first are delusions. Delusions are false beliefs that they will hold on to despite contrary or logical evidence. So delusions is the first one, and hallucinations are the second one. So both auditory and visual hallucinations, they see and hear things that aren't there. So they see and hear things, it's that um, perception of something without sensory input. Um, Some... Other things about schizophrenics, they may exhibit inappropriate emotions. They also might have what's called a flat affect, so not really showing emotion on their face. Um, There's a type of schizophrenia that involves catatonia, where they freeze. They, They become kind of a waxy, frozen state, and they don't have control over their body. Um... And so there are other, t- there's paranoid schizophrenia, disorganized, etc. cetera. Um, so what we know about what causes schizophrenia, we know there is a genetic predisposition. And we also know that schizophrenia is caused by the excess of the neurotransmitter dopamine. So too much dopamine um, causes schizophrenia. As far as treatment goes, there's no cure for schizophrenia. Um, But there are treatments, there's ways to help manage, including psychotherapy and biological therapy. And the most commonly used um, biological therapy are antipsychotic medications like Thorazine or other medications that would help to manage those hallucinations. All right, our next category is anxiety disorders. So we have generalized anxiety disorder or GAD. This is a continually tense and apprehensive state. Um, uh, the SNS, that sympathetic nervous system, that fight or flight is almost always constantly triggered and is kind of this auto- autonomic um, arousal state as if something is causing them to go into fight or flight, but it doesn't necessarily have to be anything that's actually causing it. Like they, It's not always something that's very obvious as a cause. They just feel this constant anxiety. Um, Phobias. So we have specific phobias and social phobias. Um, Social phobias, fear of embarrassment in front of others. Um, One thing that we talked about was that selective mutism, um, but any sort of social phobia where they feel embarrassed or scared to, to be in front of others, public speaking phobias, things like that. And then specific phobias. Um, so there are so many different specific phobias out there. We talked about um, arachnophobia, fear of spiders, claustrophobia, fear of enclosed or tight spaces. Um, but the one in particular that you should remember is agoraphobia, which is fear of, of being outside, uh, being outside the home, large spaces in in crowds. And the reason why agoraphobia is um, considered a disorder is because it's personally dysfunctional. It's personally dysfunctional. Someone can't live a regular normal life um, with agoraphobia. The last um, subset of anxiety that we need to know are panic disorders. So someone who has panic disorder um, experiences panic attacks where they feel an overwhelming feeling of apprehension and it can cause some of those um, those autonomic responses such as feeling like they can't catch their breath, their heart rate can accelerate, they can sweat, um, etc. And so this is something that they can't control. It just kind of comes out of nowhere. Some of the um, treatments for anxiety disorders uh, obviously psychotherapy treatments, but um, biological treatments are anti-anxiety medications like Xanax. And the reason that these work is because they help to depress some of that central nervous system activity to kick in the parasympathetic nervous system and kind of let the body not deplete all of its um, energy in fight or flight mode. The next category is obsessive compulsive disorders. Um, There are several disorders in this category in the DSM-5, but the only one that you guys need to know is OCD, actual obsessive compulsive disorder. So this has to deal with repetitive obsessions, which are the thoughts 
and then the compulsions, which are the actions. So they have the reoccurring thoughts, and then they have to act out those reoccurring actions. Um, PTSD is now its own category. So post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, this happens when someone uh, experiences trauma or stress and then has to readjust to a normal life after that and has some um, recurring anxiety, um, has social withdrawal. Um, a really common symptom of PTSD is haunting flashbacks or nightmares. Um, and so this these things cause them stress and the inability to reintegrate into society or function normally. And PTSD is actually really common. Um, the most common sufferers of PTSD are veterans, uh, war veterans, because of the things that they experience when they are deployed or um, fighting. Okay, the next category are dissociative disorders. So we have DID. This is our first subset of dissociative disorders. This is called dissociative identity disorder. And this used to be called multiple personality disorder, but we don't call it that anymore. So um, when someone has two or more distinct personalities, that's what we call DID. Um, the next category of dissociative disorders are amnesia, and part of this is dissociative fugue as well. So dissociative amnesia and fugue start usually after some sort of trauma or stress. Amnesia is where they can't recall um, memories from a certain time period, and fugue is when kind of they wake up and they they have an identity crisis. They don't know who they are. Some people in a fugue state may even start a new life. Um, so yeah, this is, this is something that is very interesting for us to study. Um, the treatments for dissociative disorders, uh, psychotherapy is usually used to treat dissociative disorders for the most part. Um, for DID, sometimes that can cause, um, or they can also have like comorbid di disorders like depression and anxiety. Um, and so in that case, they would also take medication. But usually psychotherapy is used to treat this. Our next category are somatic um, symptom disorders or somatoform disorders. The first one used to be called hypochondriasis is illness anxiety disorder. Um, and so this is when someone thinks that there's something medically wrong with them constantly. They feel like they're dying or they have some sort of illness despite the fact that their doctors will tell them that they're fine, they don't have this illness, they're constantly preoccupied with having this illness. Um, conversion disorders are the second subcategory of somatoform disorders you need to know. And this is, there are symptoms, physiological symptoms, but no biological or physiological cause. Instead, it's caused by a psychological stressor. So for example, this picture in this picture, she's had a car accident, she's extremely stressed, and then she has a headache as a result of that. Um, we watched a video on the girl from Australia who was experiencing stress and then became paralyzed and, and couldn't talk and couldn't, you know, use certain parts of her body. That was an example of a conversion disorder because it was due to psychological stress and there the doctors found no biological or physiological cause. Um, ADHD is the next category for that. Uh, or in the DSM, and so this is attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Usually these are treated with stimulants like Ritalin, for example, or Adderall. Um, people who have ADHD are easily distracted. They may make care careless mistakes or seem disorganized, um, but really it's that they have trouble filtering sensory input and sensory information, and they are just they have trouble with selective attention that most people do naturally. Um, and the onset of this is usually around age seven. And ADHD is more common in boys than in girls. Right? Okay, so um, I'm going to do a separate video on therapy. So I'm going to stop this here and then I'll do the next video on therapy.